the challenge for us today is to not be stopped or intimidated, not to be corrupted by the obvious disqualifications in all of our lives. Do you know what? If we are to look around the room, I'm sure we can find something in everybody's life that disqualifies you from being a Christian. Yet here we are, saved by Jesus, delivered, redeemed, healed, and set free by the power of God. Why? Because God was not intimidated by our disqualifications. And just as He has called Moses, He's calling you. But for you to say yes to the calling, you're going to have to look beyond your disqualifications. You were born to be a mother of nations. You were born to be a father of nations. You were born to change the world. You cannot let your natural stop you from your supernatural divine purpose in Christ. Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic multiracial fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. 3C is founded by Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius. Pastor Shane also leads the women's ministry through the It's a Girl Thing movement desiring to see all women reach their full potential in Christ. Commanded to love, commissioned to make disciples and challenged to change. Our 3C youth movement, The Vault, mentors and inspires our youth to serve God with an unlimited zeal to become unshakable leaders in their own spheres. The love of our pastors is seen in many social welfare development projects. 3C is feeding thousands of underprivileged children on a daily basis with determined intent of fulfilling the mandate of preaching to the poor through radio, television and the web. With a vibrant, contagious spirit of worship, let's join 3C in this live experience. For when you need someone to stand with you, we will pray for you. SMS your prayer request to triple three four seven, and we will pray for 30 days, trusting God for a miracle in your life. SMS the word pray followed by your prayer request to triple three four seven, and we will pray for you. Thank you very much for joining us. And we know that the presence of the Lord, where two or three are gathered in His name, there He is in the midst. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor, say, He's here in the midst. He's here in the midst. He's here in the midst. So let us honor the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. And we are trusting the Lord to speak to us a word of transformation. Won't you just bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, thank you for the privilege of having the Word in our midst, the Word of God, the living one, Jesus. Jesus Christ, the truth in our midst. And we pray that Holy Spirit, as you are here with us, you will take these lips of clay and you will speak the words of God, that you will anoint your word in my mouth. And as it goes forth, that it will go with the power of heaven to transform. It will go in the power of heaven to deliver. It will go in the power of heaven to heal, to set things right the way that you want it to be in us, Lord Jesus, so that through us, we may be the the change that the world needs today. We thank you for the, the, the teaching power of the Holy Spirit to reveal mysteries and to uh, take the treasures of the word and make it plain to us now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited this morning to know Jesus, to know that God is in control of our lives? And we are continuing with our blessed series. We are looking at Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Come on, let's say that together. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. One more time. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And so today I want to focus on the latter half of this verse. And our hashtag for today is look past, see God. Look past, see God. I want to speak about uh, how there are things in our lives that can hinder us from seeing God. And it comes from our heart, how we have positioned our hearts before the Lord. When our hearts are impure, we are spiritually blind. No amens. When our hearts, I'm just going to preach to myself there. When our hearts are 
impure, we become spiritually blind. And you know, often, how do we know that we have become spiritually blind? It's when we ask this question, where is God? Where is God? I can't see God. Where is God? Why is He not here? The Bible says that God is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. A what? An ever-present help. That means that if He promises to always be with us, never leave us, never forsake us, to be ever-present, we should never have to say, where is God? But we need to learn how to see Him. Would you agree with me? We need to learn how to see Him in everything. And that's what I want to speak about today, the ability to look past the obvious, to look past the superficial, to look past the external and to be able to see God. Hallelujah. Because we might be in this world, but we are no longer of this world. God has given us the divine ability, it comes from Him, to look past and to see Him in everything. Now, who you are greatly impacts how you see. Did you know that? I'm a normal, ordinary, average person. I um, look at the stars without any insight. Who of you have been outside lately? And while well, we've had so much of rain, we are thankful for the rain, but say it's a clear evening and you go out and you look up to the stars and all that I can say when I look at the stars, all that can come out of my mouth is, wow. That's as much as I understand. I'm not an astronomer. But do you know that when an astronomer looks at the stars, they can map the heavens. They can navigate airplanes and ships and they, can, they get so much information. To them, it's an, a whole world of information. They see what I cannot see. I just see flickering lights and I go, wow. And they can talk for three weeks about one star that I have to squint to see. Are you with me? What is the difference between that person who's an astronomer and me? It's who they are, how they are positioned towards what they are looking at. Think of flowers and plants. And again, <laughs> I'm a simpleton when it comes to flowers. I just admire them and I go, wow. When my husband gives me, are you listening, babe? When my husband gives me roses, I look at them and I go, wow. But someone who's a florist, who works with flowers, who have studied flowers, who has studied this, the science, the, the complexity of this little flower and what it takes for it to bloom and to blossom and to be perfect in every way. They don't look at it like I look at it. It's not just normal wow to them. Why? Because of who they are, they have a different perspective. Yes? And let's consider, and this one always floors me. Have you ever been to an art museum? Because you had to go. <laughs> and then you stand in front of this thing that looks like someone tripped over a bucket of paint. And the person next to you is like shivering and shaking and in awe. And you're going, wow. <laughs> no understanding. And then they'll start explaining. They'll say, look at the brush strokes. Look at the color here. Look at the angst. And I'm like, the, the what? <laughs> Why do they see what I cannot see? Because of who they are. See, now the word of the Lord is saying to us, if your heart is pure, if you are mine, if I am in you and you are in me, if you truly are a child of God, you have the ability to look past and to see God. Hallelujah. And so it is time for us not to walk this earth in the natural, not to go about looking at everything with these eyes, but to look past the obvious and to see God. Now, I have five situations that I want to highlight with uh, you, with, for us today about where it is necessary for us to look past. And the first one is from the life of Moses in the book of Exodus. We see that when God appears to Moses in a burning bush, it's a phenomenon. Never ever has there been a bush that was set on fire by God Almighty. And it's a fire that doesn't consume the bush, but it keeps on burning. And from the bush, there comes an audible voice. Hallelujah. 
God speaks to a man. God shows up and calls a man. But four times, Moses answers God and he says, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. Who am I to go to Pharaoh? Who am I to go to the Israelites? Who am I? They will never believe me. They will not receive me. They will not accept me. Who am I? I'm not eloquent. I don't have the gift of speaking. Please can you send, listen, in the words of Moses from Exodus chapter four, please send anybody else. Have you ever been so blinded by your disqualification? I'm not able to, I don't have the education, I don't have the experience, I don't have the influence, I don't have the title, I don't have the prominence, I don't have, and the list can go on and on and on. But God is calling us to look at one another and to see past the disqualification, to see past the natural, to see past the obvious, to see God. I know, I know I have made mistakes. I know I have failed. I know I have been weak. But when my husband looks at me, thank God, he doesn't look at me through my disqualifications. He looks at me through the word of God and the promises of God. And when he speaks over my life, I receive the refreshing rain of the word of the Lord. Why? He has determined not to be stopped or to be influenced, to be corrupt in his heart by my disqualification. I know if I had to believe and I understand in the natural that when I get a school report for my children and the hard facts are staring me in the face, I cannot say it is not so. But I can say that God is bigger, God is greater, God is stronger, God is wiser. And though an institution has labeled, though an institution has marked my child disqualified, I can look beyond the obvious, beyond the natural, beyond the the superficial to the word of the Lord of purpose and significance and value. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the challenge for us today is to not be stopped or intimidated, not to be corrupted by the obvious disqualifications in all of our lives. Do you know what? If we are to look around the room, I'm sure we can find something in everybody's life that disqualifies you from being a Christian. Yet here we are, saved by Jesus, delivered, redeemed, healed, and set free by the power of God. Why? Because God was not intimidated by our disqualifications. And just as he has called Moses, he's calling you. But for you to say yes to the calling, you're going to have to look beyond your disqualifications. You were born to be a mother of nations. You were born to be a father of nations. You were born to change the world. You cannot let your natural stop you from your supernatural divine purpose in Christ. Hallelujah. If your heart is pure, you have the divine ability to look beyond disqualification. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, that I may look at my husband and my children, that I may look at my disciples and my leaders, that I may look at my community, that I may look at this nation and look beyond the disqualifications of people and see the potential of Jesus in every single person. Because where there is a God, there is a way. Hallelujah. And so today the message is challenging our hearts. Are our hearts pure? Is this how we look at people? Or are we always, always stopped in our tracks by their disqualifications? Let's move along to our second example today. And so the first one, the disqualification of people. Let's look at the disruptions of life. Do you know when Mary comes onto the scene in the book of Luke chapter 1, she was betrothed to Joseph. Now, the word betrothed is much more than our word engaged. The word betrothed means that as far as anybody and everybody's concerned, she's married to him awaiting the ceremony. Are you, are you with me? So she's already his wife. We're waiting for the ceremony that will officially then declare her wife after which she will live with him, but she couldn't be promised to anybody else. The only way to get out of a betrothal was divorce. So it was seen as strongly as marriage. 
She was given and betrothed to Joseph when the angel appears and he says to her, Mary, you have found favor with God and he will bring you to give birth to his son. She's a virgin betrothed to a man. Understand she was a normal person like you and I, which means she had wedding plans. Hello? She dreamt of her dress and her bridesmaids' dresses and what would be on the menu and what would be the first song and what the preacher would read as their vows. She had dreams, she had plans. Between her and Joseph, there was an entire journey that they had mapped out for themselves when God came and disrupted everything. He disrupted their entire plan. You will be pregnant before you are married. And it will not be the child of your husband. Can you imagine their family? I am, of, I am with child of the spirit. Yes, it's a spirit, all right. We can name a few spirits that will do that to you before you're married. Can you imagine what they went through? Can you imagine what their family went through? But she had the ability to see beyond the disruption. She had the faith to look past the obvious. She was prepared to lose her dream, her plan, even her reputation, because she saw through a disruption. She saw past an interference, and she saw God. Hallelujah. But how often when things are disrupted in our lives, do we get angry with God? We get upset with God. We get impatient with God. How dare God interrupt my plan? <laughs> Sorry, it's just me. See, all of you are so holy. God bless you. When you have planned meticulously, when you have laid it out, when you have color-coded, alphabetized, outlook diarized, and God disrupts, not the devil. You can't say, I rebuke you, Satan. God disrupts. Hallelujah. Do you have the ability to see beyond the disruption? See, if you have a pure heart, you will be able to see God, to see through what is happening and see the plan and purpose of the Lord for your life. Hallelujah. So, Purity of heart means you can see through disqualifications. Purity of heart means that you can see through disruptions. And purity of heart means you can see through displeasure. Now Jonah, he was a strange character. God calls him. It says the word of the Lord in the book of Jonah chapter one came to Jonah saying, arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, cry out against it for their wickedness has come up before me. God is saying, Jonah, there's a people that are going to be condemned. There's a people that are going to be judged. There's a people who have yielded their entire existence to wicked living. They are totally corrupt. Go and preach the gospel to them. You would have thought anybody would think, what a privilege, what an honor, who am I that God would send me? No, Jonah gets on a boat and sail, sail away. In the opposite direction. <laughs> he runs away from God. How ridiculous. You can't get away from God. Doesn't matter how far you get a sailing. So as he goes on a boat and he sails away, eventually he ends up in the belly of a fish. This is crazy. And then he's vomited out on the beach and God allows him another opportunity, speaks to him again. And I want to read to you Jonah chapter four and verse one. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly. Ooh, that's me right there. God says, forgive your enemies. I go, no, it displeases me to forgive them. Because do you know what they did, Lord? And forget the damage that they've done to me. Do you know the damage that they've done to my family? Do you know the impact that they've had to the church? Do you know, Lord, as if he doesn't? Jonah says to God, he says, they don't deserve to be saved. God's like, I know that. That's why I'm saving them. Because grace, because mercy, because you.